Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Muskegon County Transportation Committee is March 10th, 2022 at 3.01 p.m. At this time, I would like to request a roll call. Commissioner Steer. Here. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Here. Commissioner Hughes. Here. Commissioner Learing. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Pago. Oh, I'm so blessed to be here today. <laughs> Commissioner Smolnick. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Thank you. All present. Uh, next on the agenda this afternoon, approval of the agenda. So Support. Second. Support. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Strategic. Any opposed? No. No. Uh, next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of February 10th, 2022. Moved. Support. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, we will be moving on. Uh, item number five, we have two informational items uh, with the uh, information in your packets. Uh, um, why? Second. File. Sir? Yeah, I would like to ask Mr. Coombs a question. Yes. Wait, what? Oh, wait, no, what that's under transportation. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was just correcting you. It's number are. six, not five that you were on. That we're on number minutes, five. Right? We're on number five. So, yeah. so these are informational items for us to file. So one is uh, Muskegon County Airport uh, operating report. Wait, oh, wait. What, what, are you what doing uh, committee are you doing now? You're doing transportation. transportation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Transportation. Oh, you're oh, doing both? You're in community development. I did too. Sorry. I did too. Sorry. You're doing both? I, right now, I'm you doing are. What do you have on Kathy? Okay. Well, then I do have a question for Ms. We call them transportation. We're not doing items yet. No, it's we're not doing items. Items. These were informational items. But if you have a question. Yeah, I just wondered why there is such a low number for cargo, airport cargo. cargo. Well, that would be Mr. Lucas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon, Joel Burgess with the Muskegon County Airport. So the question is on year-over-year -year cargo. Oh, right. <laughs> it seems to be really low. Well, sure. zero. Uh, cargo is actually hit and miss from month to month. Uh, the last six months, we've actually had a, a very substantial increase in cargo just because of the supply chain issues. So you oh, see more aircraft oh, sure. come in, but uh, really it is it's very hit and miss from month over month. So you, you may have uh, two large or larger aircraft come in, which would make up uh, you know, several thousand pounds of cargo. So it may be different just from month over month. So that's not the priority, it's the passenger service. Correct. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not unique to have to see that cargo number go yeah. up. And down. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Wait a minute. Do you have another question? Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm wondering why we're not trying to market that more, mm -hmm. um, especially with the logistic issues we're having. Um, do we have an idea of whether we're going to try to do that or um, what can we do to make that even better? It seems like it'd be a great alternative to some of the trucking issues they're having right now. Uh, that is a great opportunity and, and the, the marketing really comes more into the infrastructure that we have at the airport, the runways and taxiways and support infrastructure. Uh, air cargo marketing is very different from passenger air service marketing. The, the cargo carriers look for, they're very hub and spoke, so they look for out and back type airports. So Lansing is a primary UPS connection feed for the region, and Grand Rapids is, is primary for FedEx, so you see aircraft go out and back from there. So uh, while we can always get out there and, and talk to the, the smaller air cargo folks, um, that network is pretty predictable in terms of uh, airports they serve. So. We can definitely be out in front of it though. And we have the infrastructure and they see that in the publication. So we're certainly capable of handling it. It's just a matter of, of getting their attention. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns regarding the uh, item A? Uh, if not, moving uh, next is item B in the informational packets. It's a Matt's February operational report. Was there any questions, comments, or concerns regarding that report? 
Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Moving right along, uh, item number six, <laughs> public comment on an agenda item. Persons may address the board during the, the time set aside for public comment or at any time by suspension of all of the, rule, of the rules. All persons must address the board and state their name uh, uh, for the record, comments uh, shall be limited to two minutes for each participant unless time is extended prior to the public comment period by a vote of the majority of the board. Was there any public comment at this time? No? Nope. Not seeing anything. Maybe out in the uh, see. All right, items for consideration. Um, first one is TR22 slash uh, 03 09. Uh, to move to authorize the Muskegon Area Transit System to issue a solicitation for two support vehicles and to award solicitation administratively to the highest rated proposers in the amount not to exceed $60,000. And the additional information is in the packet on page eight. And I wanna thank the administration for uh, going to referring back to that uh, in our packet. So thank you for thank doing you. that. Yes. Motion we to approve. That. Motion to approve. Support. Support. Any other, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I look at the miles on the two vehicles that are being replaced, um, I think I have 160,000 on my car and I'm not thinking about replacing it yet. Um, Although these are older, obviously, um, so that's one concern: is is this necessary? Uh, and the other is, um, have you considered uh, hybrid or, or um, plug-in hybrid or um, what's it called with plug-in and gas? The electric or electric hybrid? Jim Coons, the Speed Area Transit, twenty six twenty four Sixth Street. Um, to your first question about the use of the vehicles and, and how we utilize these, um, the support vehicles in the MATS program are primarily used for driver relief. So uh, in the morning, a driver will take a bus out, and then at shift change, rather than bringing that bus back to the garage, the replacement driver will drive out to where the bus is, switch, and, and come back. So we do a lot of short trips. Uh, with these right, vehicles. which is perfect for a sure. Little bit. And, yeah. and maintenance mechanics running out to get parts or to to work on a vehicle in the field. So we do not put a lot of miles on. However, we do. Um, <clears throat> these are grant funded from the Federal Transit Administration. They require us to have transit asset management plans and to keep the fleet current. So a vehicle like this, once you hit 14 years, they start to consider that a, a useful life benchmark, and they ask for plans for how you're going to replace. So um, these are both, uh, have both exceeded that 14 year age and we're looking to replace them um, to keep the fleet in a state of good repair. Um, to your other question, um, for this purchase, I have not looked at the, the alternative fuels. Um, you know, at the time, um, those are options, but we didn't set the grant up to be able to afford that type of vehicle. So we have $60,000 um, in grant funding available for this purchase. And, and we could make adjustments for that if the board would like us to look at alternatives. Well, I'm, I'm warning you, I'm gonna be moving in that direction to try and get more and more electric vehicles, given the stat, state of our um, global warming, et cetera, <laughs> the county's responsibility and, and um, try to help with that, like mitigate the uh, changes here. Yeah, yes, so, she's done. Sure. So, um, Bob, that's not a directive from the board. Uh, some of us are quite content with our fossil fuel vehicles, so you don't have direction at this point. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, comments, or concerns? And these are grants that and, and within uh, we're working with for those two vehicles. Commissioner Sear, please. Uh, what, so what are we doing with these two trucks, I guess? What's your normal procedure? Sure. So, <clears throat> excuse me, assuming that we have a successful solicitation here, I'll come back to the board motion to put these into the county auction process. Uh, we have some vehicles, some buses that will also be uh, retired fairly soon, and I'll bring that all back to the board. Okay, thank you. All right. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. I was, I just, I guess I'm concerned with the language that says to the highest rated proposer, 
Is it just by the rating or is it by the pricing also? So I'm developing the, the, the specs now, and my intent is to have three factors in that. One would be suitability of the vehicle, and we have a pretty tight spec for it. So we're not going to have a wide variety um, of different types of vehicles, but suitability of the vehicle, availability of the vehicle, and price mm -hmm. being the three factors that we'll rate them on. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yes. <laughs> um, and you, I noticed that you have also vans. Uh, what are those used for? Primarily the same thing for for the drivers to train for one person. Um, yes, and it also gives us the ability if a vehicle if a bus is stranded uh, okay. or breaks down in the field with some minivans in here, we have the ability to perhaps take some passengers. Okay. Uh, to an about that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Um, like a roll call vote for this item for consideration. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. No. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. And that moves forward. Uh, next uh, item for consideration, TR 22 03 10. Uh, move to authorize adjustment of the wage scale for mass transit maintenance mechanic position classification GF 860 from GU 220 to GU 280, effective the first full pay after April 1st, 2022. So moved. Okay. Motion support. Any questions, comments, or concern regarding this item? Saying none. Uh, yes, did you have uh, a Not really. I was going to mention it now, but I would like to see what the amounts of these are because it never tells us GF 860 classification. Oh, yeah, it's, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong page. Okay, perfect. So, uh, we'll call a vote on this. It's, it's Commissioner Hughes, yes. Uh, Commissioner Laring, no. Commissioner Nash, yes. Commissioner Pago? No. Commissioner Stolman? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Thank you. And that moves forward. Uh, next item for consideration TR 22 uh, 03 uh, 11. Uh, approve a First Amendment allowing for two additional five year renewal period, periods and release and consent to assignment of lease relating to a parking lot land lease agreement between the speaking county michigan and gbb development llc for land located at the muskegon airport so moved support support any questions comments or concerns yes uh commissioner church go ahead i just have a question um bob is this um related to one of the hangers Bob Lucas, Community Development Director. This is for a parking lot um, that is used primarily by Pratt and Whitney. Oh, okay. They have a yeah. building next to our maintenance building, um, so it's for the parking lot. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I have a question. Is yes. It, so we are currently using it as a parking lot. It's leased by GVB at this time, and Pratt and Whitney uses the parking lot. The county owns it. Oh, okay. <laughs> So this is to just agreement to renew the, is it a renewal? Well, GVB is selling the building. Okay. So it, it would assign the parking lot lease to the company that's purchasing it. Okay. All right. Any other questions? If not, uh, I'll do. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, do we have an opt-out option on this? I don't see one. Well, I think I think it's an assignment, so I don't know. I, I did not look at it. I would like to head at review before full board to make sure that we have an opt out because if anything ever happens, we have to change over the property, whatever. We need to make sure we can get out okay, of we'll there. Yes, you know, I, I just want to say that um, probably, probably is a significant business in this community. And, 
you will be careful about taking a part in the way that I'm even paying for it. No, 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 I'm not talking about taking it from them. What I'm saying is that if we sold the airport, then we have to be able to get out of that contract. Well, we so, it, whatever, yeah, anything that happened, yeah. and I'm just making sure we can change over if we need to, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with them. I just want to make sure we're able to move as we need to. Mm -hmm. okay, we'll have that for you by full board. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, have they sold it yet, or are they do they have a buyer? They're waiting on this lease assignment. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll call on this one. Commissioner Larry. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Hobby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and Commissioner Brown. Yes. And that moves forward. Uh, next item for consideration, uh, 22-03-12, uh, move to authorize issuance of a request for quotes on RFQ to procure new facility boilers for the airport terminal building. So moved. Support. So the motion is support. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Commissioner Sear. How many boilers are we looking at? Two boilers. Two boilers. Two boilers. Uh, do you know what the typical... Uh, I believe it's 20 years, and I know that the four that we have only, I believe, two of them are currently working. And are not by a threat. Okay, thank you. So at this point, this is uh, going out for our request our RFQ, and then yes. it will come to full board and we'll want you to get information. So, no? um, all in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nope. Moving right along, PR 22 03 13. Uh, move to approve amendment number one between Muskegon County, Michigan, and CNS Engineers for Taxiway A preliminary design services at the Muskegon County Airport in the amount of $190,139, which will be 95% federally grant funded, 2.5% state funded, and 2.5% county funded for total cost to the county of $4,753.48. So moved. Yeah. Any questions, comments, and concerns regarding this item? Yes. Commissioner Pago. Which grant? Which grant is this one? Which grant? This is, a, um, this is from our airport CIP capital improvement plan grants. So these are annual grants that we receive. This is to, this is not related to the COVID relief with ARPA or any of that. Not at this time. None of these are okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, uh, this would be uh, we'll do a roll call on this too. Commissioner Learing. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. <clears throat> I forgot who passed. I'm sorry. I did. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Brown. Yes. And that moves forward. Uh, next uh, item for consideration, TR 22, size 3, 14, authorize the board chair to sign MDOT grant contract 2022-0359 uh, for the required airport rescue and firefighting training services for 2022 in the amount of $2,000. So moved. Any questions, comments, or concerns regarding that item? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote since there is a dollar amount. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Leering. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Commissioner did. Brown. I uh, guess. I know we look alike. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, All right, second. and that moves forward. Uh, item number eight, unfinished business. Uh, any unfinished business to come to this committee? 
I just yes, have I'm a sorry. question. I just have a question. Um, do we have any kind of update with? We had a trip out there last fall, with, re relating to the new construction and all of that. Where are we at with all of that? Not where? At the airport. Airport. I'm sorry. Um, where we as far as far as the roof goes. Yeah. Um, oh. Is there an update on anything to do with that? They're getting the final design. It's getting ready to go out for bid. So we're waiting on the bid results to come back after the okay. final design. Okay. Thank you for the question. Um, and, okay, that's unfinished. I have a new business. Okay. Any other? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> any other unfinished business? If not new business, any new business to come to this committee? I would like to bring an item up. The email that you received earlier today about the airports. Yes. Um, so, Joel, would you like to kind of brief what you learned late last night, actually, and then we can share with the board? Uh, Joel Burgess, UC and County Airport. We did have a phone call with uh, SkyWest Airlines late last evening. Skyway? SkyWest. Sky Sky yes, yeah, they do business for uh, United <laughs> Express here at the airport. So, they are an essential air service provider. So, they provide air service to uh, 50 airports across the country, yeah. and they brought a lot of air, those airports on a phone call yesterday to let uh, these airports know that 29 airports, uh, they are providing their notice to the Department of Transportation that they'd like to terminate this essential air service at 29 airports, and Muskegon County is one of those airports. So the way this process works, uh, there's still a contract out for essential air service, that contract expires at the end of 2022. So regardless of the fact that they put their notice into the Department of Transportation, that doesn't affect the contract per se. What it is over the next 90 days, SkyWest will continue to fly United Express flights in and out. The Department of Transportation will go seek another carrier to, to fill the uh, essential air service component for the airport beyond that 90 days. So this basically sets the timer going, if you will, to uh, provide that notice to DOT to go look for other air service. Uh, it's not unique that this happens, and, and, and quite often the Department of Transportation will go back to the, the contracted carrier and actually hold them into the contract. So even beyond that 90 days, they will require, uh, they could possibly require SkyWest to continue flying that service through the a portion of or for the duration of that uh, the contract period, which again is the end of this year. So uh, it could mean a lot of different things for air service at the airport in terms of uh, what that future is. Uh, it, I, I see it, it stinks. It's, it's a horrible way to, to end a, a Wednesday evening, so to speak. But uh, there's also opportunities in that as well, I think, where um, it gives us an opportunity to look for a, a different provider, uh, a 50 seat aircraft may at one time have been a good fit for, for a community our size with the demand our size. And, uh, if we could look to even reduce the per aircraft capacity, that may give us an opportunity to increase the frequency. So instead of one or two flights a day, we may go after three or four flights a day, which would give us a chance then to maybe uh, serve different destinations. So possibly two westbound, two eastbound, Chicago, Detroit, or, or any mix of that. So. Um, this basically starts the clock for that process. So I expect a very busy 90 days coming up. Uh, I just got an email five minutes ago that the notice uh, was officially provided. So uh, these 29 communities, I've been keeping an ear to the ground, if you will, for uh, uh, media on it. And there've been five or six now that, that have kind of gotten uh, wind of this in these different communities. So it, it's an important part of a lot of these smaller communities throughout the, throughout the states to have the service. Uh, you know, this airport's, I, I tracked it back to, I believe, 1986 was when I first started seeing essential air service documents at the airport. So it's been a longstanding program here at the airport, and I expect it certainly to continue through the end of this contract and, and certainly uh, beyond that as well. But that's where we are. Currently. They can uh, limit their services, though, by, by having just one during this transition period. They say we're servicing it. Or correct me if I'm wrong, I guess. Yeah, only, only if it's approved by the DOT. So okay, gotcha. um, SkyWest over the last nine months uh, has been hit very hard by uh, pilot shortages and COVID didn't help any of this. So uh, what that did was it just accelerated the, the hiring chain from 
regional carriers up to mainline carriers. So all of a sudden, all these pilots are going to the mainline, which doesn't leave a lot of folks to fly for the regional carriers. So they've uh, they've made multiple requests over the last six months to reduce service at a lot of communities. Um, some of them approved by DOT, some of them uh, denied. And the most recent one was to move from 12 flights a week at Muskegon down to 10, which is where, mm -hmm. where we currently have that discussion point now. Thank you. Well, please, thank you for the update. I, I appreciate it. Commissioner Scott. Uh, Joe, I, I know that I'm, I'm sure that there's other commissioners that will be part of what I'm going to say right now, but over the years, um, I've thought about is, is it possible for a community to run their own airline with one, you know, the couple of airplanes? I won't say it's impossible. I, I don't know that I've heard of a, a municipality or a community doing that. I think it's more uh, them reaching out to a, an aircraft owner or provider, like a charter operator that could do that and then enter into a contract with them to provide that service. Uh, it'd certainly be up to the community then to market it. I, I always say, if it, as a community, if you want to keep the service, you have to use the service. So uh, before anyone my expectations before anyone would even listen to that we'd have to show uh an aircraft or charter operator that that it will be viable i know when i talked about before there was discussion about cross ticketing and, and uh gate space and let's say air detroit someplace and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up so yeah. skywest um they fly for united airlines here they're a united connection carrier so if you buy a ticket on United, you fly on United through your flight. Uh, a lot of smaller communities to actually have preferred arrangements with some of these carriers. So if you go on Expedia and you want to go from Muskegon to Orlando, you'd still get the options to purchase on uh, a single purchase. It would just be on two separate airlines with two separate tickets. So if that makes sense. You can't go on to a United website or any other website and, and purchase that round trip. It'd have to be done through uh, through an Expedia or Travelocity or one. <coughs> Yeah, uh, what are the chances of getting another carrier? There's uh, there's certainly essential air service carriers out there, uh, and I think there will be interest in, in our market here. Uh, I think the challenge will be knowing that 29 markets are coming on all at once. Yeah. Um, these aren't large providers. SkyWest is, is far and above the largest provider for EAS service throughout the country. So I think... Uh, the important part for, for me and, and uh, the community is to make sure that we get out there as far as far as we can in front of it and just let people know about the community and about the air service and what it could provide. So we just I, need to I make think sure having having more flights and smaller planes makes a lot of sense. I mean, I I got stuck a couple of times having to travel to Grand Rapids to get a, a the next to get a flight when there was a you know mechanical error. So if they're more more flights, then then we can keep people here. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you for the update. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just I'm along the same line as what Bob was at. I'm wondering, you know, have we really tried to look at possibly getting a, a charter that might be wanting to just fly from Muskegon to Chicago or from here to Detroit just to connect with those <coughs> major flights? Um, it probably could be pretty lucrative for them just doing those going back and forth. I don't know if it would be lucrative for them, especially for that, <clears throat> that small point to point. That's why the EAS program exists. So you, if you don't have that strong demand, then the, the um, FAA will step in and subsidize those flights. So it just it's telling that we have to be part of a subsidized market, I guess, up front. Where we are very successful are the the one-off charters, and that's not going to change. So the, the casino flights or the, the flights to Bullhead City or, or uh, Atlantic City, if they come back, we could certainly look at point to point at mm -hmm. specific times of year. So Orlando, you know, this time of year, perfect spring break. Look mm -hmm. for those one-off charter operators that would be willing to do that. And they can sell seats through that, just like they do for the casino operations. So it could be viable, just probably challenging for a point to point like a Muskegon in the Chicago or Detroit. Yes, yes. I think um, probably the time has come to look at something else because uh, essential air service, I, and I'm certainly no expert in any of this, but I suspect the essential air service would be a lot more than an airport like uh, Traverse City where it's a three hour drive to another airport. But for us, 
before Grand Rapids, as we all know, is only about 45 minutes. And in big cities, you know, uh, it might take 45 minutes to get to an airport anyway, you know, just the regular airport. So um, I I know there's been some talk about a central air service and I, it might not even be available to us, even if it's still successful in, in its current format, um, because of the, the proximity of Grand Rapids. Uh, so I, I, it's just time to start thinking about what happens if this becomes just a commercial aviation airport. Like I, I've heard about that, but I don't really know any of the facts and details and how that would work. If it just becomes a what airport? General aviation would be no commercial flights. It would be just the current oh, business private. without. And actually, if you think about it, Sky West only flies in here really in and out twice a day. I mean, you can walk with the visit and people flying out of here are private airplanes. We already have an exception under the EAS program because we are so close to Grand Rapids. Um, and actually, that's it's Grand Rapids and also Chicago and Detroit. The, the regulation is you have to be more than 210 miles, I believe, from a, a medium or a large hub airport. And, and we satisfy that requirement both east and west. So we're, we already have that exception to, to be in the EAS airport. You know, also, one other thing, um, and I'm, well, I, I want to just bring some history into this. This long predates me. But from what I understand, originally before the Grand Rapids Airport existed in our airport system, that current format, the two communities, uh, there was talk about building an airport somewhere around Cooper's Bay. And of course, Muskegon objected to that because we had our own airport. And, and uh, Grand Rapids built there was on the other side of Grand Rapids. Um, Looking back on it, and I, I do remember when Muskegon had a couple hundred passengers, a couple hundred thousand passengers a year, if I remember right back when there was three airlines coming in here. So maybe that worked for a while when it was unregulated. Um, but this airport just doesn't make sense. I mean, I, the airport makes sense, but just having commercial flights in here, I, I don't know. And I've thought about, could, could we just fly? That idea about having our own airline, you know, buy a couple of planes, um, try to make that work. Nobody's going to want to pay what it would cost to do that. You know, they want to go to Chicago for a hundred bucks and you get, get an, a small airplane and say it was a 50 passenger airplane, it's got, it's full and getting even $200 is $10,000. I don't even think that would pay for the maintenance and fuel and the pilot and everybody else should need to do it. So anyway, I we need to start thinking about what happens if. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? If not, oh, yeah. oh. Uh, public comment. Any public comment uh, for this committee? None. Uh, final board comment. Uh, any final board comments at this time? Okay. Seeing none. This meeting is adjourned. Waiting two minutes for me to stop recording and start recording.